Hello everybody, I'm Colin Ganley and I'm here today with Jeff Moutet. How are you doing? Good, good. How are you? I mean, we're in Havana. How bad could it be? We're staying at a, at a private house and one of the things that will happen a lot when you're in Havana is that you'll be presented with the opportunity to buy cigars, right? Um, now there are the official shops, the La Casa del Habanos, where you can buy legitimate cigars that you know were produced in the factory, got the bands, went through quality control, were prepared for export, but are available for sale. However, you're also going to find that you're offered cigars on the street, or in our case, we were offered uh, here in this house that we rented uh, some cigars to purchase, and these are the cigars that were available to purchase. So we thought this was a great opportunity to talk about what you might encounter and what you should look for uh, if you want to buy authentic Cuban cigars. So when you first saw this offering, what was, your, what was the first thought that came into your head? Fake. <laughs> why? why? Why did you think they were fake? Well, I mean, number one, this is my fourth trip to Cuba. Uh -huh. um, so I've, I've been through this a couple of times and, and I understand that Nearly anything you buy outside the La Casa de Habano is not going to be an approved product. Okay. Um, secondly, you look at these, there's no seal, there's no barcode, there's no date or factory stamp on the bottom. Just right away, they look like they're not going to be correct. Yeah. Yeah, with these ones, they're, they're kind of an easy example from the box because the box is, right. looks so bad. Normally, there's a guarantee seal that sits on the box in this area and comes down to the front of it. And even underneath that seal, there's, there's, a, there's a factory seal. sticker that you normally never see when you buy the cigars in the, the, the official shops, but it's there. Um, then the warning sticker would be placed somewhere that wouldn't interfere with this. So the warning right. sticker would be over here. And then there should be a sticker that says Habanos, Habanos that comes across the top corner. In addition to that, the, the box itself is the wrong color. The varnish that they used is the wrong color. So at a distance, it's pretty easy to tell that the box is fake. But maybe the cigars are real. Maybe the cigars are real. They could be. I mean, I've smoked cigars off the street in Havana that have been absolutely brilliant yeah. that were, were not factory approved. Right. And I've also smoked cigars off the street in Havana that tasted like they were filled with sawdust. Yeah. So it, it's kind of a crapshoot. The last time we were here, I bought a box that I knew was fake just to see how they smoked, see how they yeah. tasted. And, I mean, 75, 80 bucks. Because what is a fake cigar in Cuba, right? It's, it's a cigar that is, didn't come through the full system of the factory with the quality control and all those things. However, it's still Cuban tobacco, it's right. still Cuban wrapper, binder, filler, it's still all Cuban tobacco, hopefully. Yeah. And it's, I mean, the, the case that we usually imagine for, for fake cigars is that somebody somehow got the tobacco, which would be coming from the same types of farms that you would get the, cigar, the tobacco for the official cigars, right? Right. It's just that it came outside of the system. And then somebody here, probably in Havana, but maybe somewhere else, rolled those cigars by hand. It would still be a handmade Cuban cigar made by Cubans, right? Right. So essentially, it's still a Cuban cigar, but the difference is that while the box says Cohiba, it's not going to be a Cohiba because a Cohiba is a certain selection of tobaccos to have a certain taste. And that's what we're expecting. This is not. Right. But let's open it up and see what we see on the inside of the box. So some of this packaging is, is sort of correct. It's got this. There's your, there's your Habano seal that goes that way. Yeah. And when you buy them officially, they would never there's, be loose stickers. There's like your this. guarantee seal that would be right there. And that's fake. This was not printed by the same company that prints the ones for uh, the, the real boxes. Off. The color's wrong, everything's wrong about it. You can see even the UPC isn't readable. That wouldn't be scannable. The bars are blended together. This is a terrible, terrible uh, fake. Um, now here's the fun part. Yeah. The wrapper on those cigars looks absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And, and this is what you'll find, is sometimes these, these cigars that are not legitimate are actually good cigars, except for the packaging, and they're just not the blend that it's supposed to be. Now, 
I didn't realize, <laughs> I didn't realize quite how bad these were. This is the first time that, that I'm opening up the box. So these are, uh, the wrapper looks good. The heads are all damaged. The heads are all damaged. And while- The bands are severely, I mean, there's- Those bands are terrible. I see six mistakes off the top of my head. This is one of the easiest space, fakes to spot. But at the same time, you own a cigar shop in the United States, right? Right. And so you have customers who go on vacation to Mexico and different places, and they'll come back to your cigar store with cigars like this to smoke or share with their friends or different things like that, right? Right. And a lot of people think that this is a real Cohiba cigar, don't they? Oh yeah, it's, it's the only exposure they've ever had to them. I and mean, we get people all the time come in. The, the funnest ones are the ones with the uh, the plastic top that yeah. say cigars from Cuba. Yeah, yeah. They, those are automatically fakes. Because Cuba is, it doesn't make uh, a cigar box with a transparent acrylic lid. Not at all. So, um, wow. Just looking at this, th there is so much wrong with this. They're supposed to be, on, on, a, on a current Cohiba band, you have uh, micro printing in the upper and lower gold lines on the band. In addition to that, you would, in the, in the head of the, of the Cohiba Indian, you would have, uh, or the Taino Indian, you would have multiple layers of, of printing technology. So there's, a, there's an image, a smaller image of the same head, inside of the broader outline of the head um, that's done in a different technology and there should be embossing as well this band does not have any of the embossing that it's supposed to have what else do you, you you can see on this one on the cohiba on the c it's all blended together you got your rows of dots that are cut off at the top and the bottom uh -huh. which is incorrect yeah it's just a bad, bad, bad fake band. All right, so this one's pretty obvious, but what would, what is, at the end of the day, when someone presents this to you, they're probably gonna say, um, hey, look, I know that the ones in the store are $100 a piece, but you can have this for, I don't know, maybe a common price, I'm not sure what it is today, but let's say it's $10 or something like that. Somebody says, hey, um, that maybe they come up with a good story. Like, hey, I have a friend who works in the factory and these came from the factory. Sure, the packaging isn't correct, but they're, they're good. Um, and you may or may not believe them, but where, where, where do you think that, do you think people should buy them? Yes and no. I mean, we get 10 people a month come in and my cousin's a UPS pilot or this, that, or the other. There's three or four pretty standard stories. What I tell everybody all the time is if you've already bought them, smoke it. If you right. like it, smoke more. If you yeah. don't like it, don't smoke them anymore. I mean, at the end of the day, $10, it's probably Cuban tobacco. Yeah. It may not be the exact Cohiba blend, but it, it, I've smoked fakes off the street that were absolutely brilliant, yeah. and I've smoked horrible ones. So smoke it. If you like it, smoke another one. If you don't, throw them away. Yeah, I don't disagree with that, but at the same time, I have a completely different uh, take on it personally. So a couple things. I don't, I don't mind smoking cigars, Cuban cigars that are not from the factory. But, and, and I know that Cuban people need help, they need money, they need a lot right. of support. But at the same time, I hate these cigars <laughs> because they're, they're pretending to be something that they're not. And so I don't like that people, it, it's, not, it's, not a, it's exa not exactly a trademark issue, it's more of a, a Cohiba is supposed to be a certain thing. You know, the, the people who spend their lives working in the curing and in the growing and in the rolling and in quality control and the blending, they, they develop that craft for their lifetime. Right. And it's their profession and they take a lot of pride in it. And so when you, when you smoke an actual um, cigar that's gone through that process, you're smoking something that people have poured their effort and time and expertise into, and it's supposed to be a certain thing, and this is not that thing.